Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well today, and what do you know, who would have thunk? We have got some new findings from the FBI on what occurred January 6th. After a very serious investigation of people's Lego sets and long questioning sessions of boomers who accidentally wandered into the Capitol and got lost, and the arrest of a few dumbasses who did deserve it, who were smashing windows and sniffing AOC's shoes, the FBI has finally discovered that basically what anyone with half a brain has known this entire time, that January 6th was likely not some massive coordinated plot. Thanks, FBI. Really glad we had you around to solve that. You did it. You figured the puzzle out. You. You look like you're up to something. And you know, as, as I say this, unfortunately, the arrests, the investigations, and the fake news continue to pour in without a shred of remorse, correction, accuracy, or seemingly sanity. But before we jump into that, a quick word from our sponsor. If you're anything like me and you're constantly having to put money in your Alex Jones was right jar, your friends investing in crypto and gold probably looks a hell of a lot less weird these days, especially with massive inflation and simply irresponsible economic decisions by our governments. Diversifying savings today is a must. And right now, Noble Gold is not just offering a tangible savings asset, but a piece of history from one of America's most important shipwrecks. And no, it's not the Titanic. It is the SS Central America, known as the Ship of Gold. It sank in 1857, where it stayed for more than 160 years. After years of courtroom battles to access these treasures from the deep, you can finally own one of these coins recovered from it yourself. Each coin has a unique recovery number and comes in a display box with a certificate of authenticity. There is only a limited amount of these coins, so if you are interested in picking them up, you can call Noble Gold right now on 877-646-5347 to order with free and speedy shipping. The websites and numbers are also linked down below this video. All right, so let's jump into this kerfuffle. <laughs> In the context of 2020 America, riots were not exactly rare. Cities from Minneapolis to Portland saw millions in property damage and violence against their poorest communities. Entire city blocks were declared autonomous zones. Breaking news in the so-called Capitol Hill organized protest zone. There's been yet another shooting early this morning. And tragically, those murdered in these riots were given very little mainstream media airtime or proper mourning. However, only one of the riots which occurred in that time period received overwhelmingly negative and conspiratorial coverage. The protest on January 6th at the US Capitol. And now that conspiratorial coverage claiming this was a deliberate attempted insurrection is finally being brought into question by the FBI. Here is a quote from Reuters. Though federal officials have arrested more than 570 alleged participants, the FBI at this point believes the violence was not centrally coordinated by far-right groups or prominent supporters of then-President Donald Trump. According to the sources, who have been either directly involved or briefed regularly on the wide-ranging investigation, 90 to 95 percent of these are one-off cases, said a former senior law enforcement official with knowledge of the investigation. Then you have 5% maybe of these militia groups that were more closely organized, but there was no grand scheme with Roger Stone and Alex Jones and all of these people to storm the Capitol and take hostages. Like, duh. I, I mean, if you have ever been in a riot, a mob, or even a general protest situation of which I've filmed many, you will know these events can take a turn real quick. A crowd can disappear seemingly instantaneously with no organization but just collective boredom. It can get violent suddenly. Crowds of people can storm down a street that wasn't on any marked plan. What I'm essentially saying is for anyone who understands how crowds work even a little bit, it shouldn't be surprising at all 
that a crowd could see a few people break into a building, begin following them, and then others who never saw the initial break-in literally thinking they're just allowed to walk in and continuing on with the group, especially considering there have been plenty of protests inside the Capitol before. So why the hell would the media instantly assume this was a coordinated insurrection with no question unless they were being deliberately disingenuous? If there were mass letters that went out to Trump rally participants telling them, hey guys, we're gonna go raid the Capitol, those letters would have come out months ago. They would have come out well before January 6th even. Humans can hardly keep a secret between two people, let alone thousands. So it should be entirely unsurprising that the FBI are leaning towards no organized plot, scant evidence, not there. And yet, as all of this is occurring, you have people like Michael Moore still desperately grasping onto this narrative that it was an organized attempt to take over the government. So much so, this man compared January 6th to the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan. <laughs> Massive brain take here from Michael Moore. I cannot even fathom the audacity, the privilege, to act like a few boomers and a dude in cosplay breaking some windows in the Capitol is the same as a Taliban takeover of a country. But here we are. Here we are, my friends, 2021. It is the current year. <laughs> Let's move on to something more serious though, because while laughing at Michael Moore is fun, <laughs> there are actual lives being destroyed by this witch hunt and false information. Don't get me wrong. If you are destroying property, attacking people, etc., I am always going to be consistent in saying you should be charged for that. But we are having people like Owen Schroyer from InfoWars getting charged for standing on the steps of the Capitol. Standing on the steps, not entering, not breaking things, not telling people to lynch politicians. This guy was literally just standing on the doorsteps and they zoomed in on a photo, found his face outside, and they've charged him on the technicality of that being a restricted area. Please tell me, because I'm having a lot of trouble here, Please tell me how this is making America a safer place. And you know what? Maybe you'll say, well, you know what? He was technically in a restricted zone. Well, Schroyer is not the only one who is getting this clearly biased treatment. DEA Special Agent Mark Ibrahim was on Tucker Carlson talking about how he lost his job as an agent after attending the January 6th rally. He did not step a foot in the Capitol building. He was not involved in any rioting. And his comment on this is quite sad. He says, And uh, I'm the son of two immigrants who left oppressive regimes. And, um, you know, my mom instilled in me a debt that we owe to this country for the liberties and freedoms. They're, they're not free. And so just the saddest part about this is I can't serve my country anymore. Well, speaking but, um, of oppressive regimes. Does that feel like justice to you? Does punishing this man for partaking in his right to attend a political rally feel like it's good for America? Ibrahim is taking legal action against the DEA. However, it's fairly obvious that these witch hunts and ruined lives will continue until the narrative of January 6th is corrected. Because it is a false one right now. That's not to say trespassing isn't wrong, rioting isn't wrong, but asserting, for example, that this was like the Taliban, asserting that five people were killed by Trump rioters, this is simply false. Of the five deaths that occurred, three were Trump supporters who died of unrelated medical conditions. One was a cop who died of unrelated medical incidents on a separate day. And the other was a Trump supporter who was unarmed and shot by a Capitol guard. And yet, if you asked half of America right now about this, none of them would know that this was the case. They would continue to think that five people were killed by Trump rioters. So to all of those whining, jumping up and down about how right-wingers are downplaying January 6th while they are wildly exaggerating it, it's about time you learned that exaggerating is just as dangerous as downplaying. Why? Because neither leads to justice. Punishing people and misguiding the nation to believe a group are guilty of crimes they did not commit is a horrific thing to do. 
And I would say the exact same if these false claims were being made about Black Lives Matter protesters right now. We must deal in truth to get justice. And it's really terrifying that there is so much misinformation out there that you have to sift through to find it. We now know for sure that a bunch of the information we were given about January 6th was false, that we were being lied to. So what other bullshit are we being fed? If the American people are losing trust in their leaders, if they're losing trust in their media, can we really blame them for that? Because it really seems like it's on the politicians and the reporters to step it up and stop lying, not the people. But that's it for today, everyone. I always feels good to get these rants out of my system and I appreciate you all listening. I'm looking forward to reading the comments down below and I will see you next time.